Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, and it is such a happy Wooly Wednesday because today we have Laura Ricks in the house of Emerald Hill Textiles. I know that's why you're here and that's why we're all here too. We have been having so much fun with her in the studio. She's brought lots of show and tells, lots of just ideas to things to share with you and we have sneak peeks of her upcoming online classes in our online school so what a happy Wednesday it is and I just want to say hi to a few people I see Diane and Washington and Elizabeth in Virginia thank you all so much for being here Christina all the way in Poland always here with us what time is it there girlfriend tell us you're always here Sally in St. Louis Gloria in the UK Tammy in Connecticut hi y'all Mary in France, Janine in Pennsylvania, Carol in England, and everybody, thank you all so much for being here. We are just so glad that you would take time out of your week and spend it with us. Like I said, we have been having such a wonderful time having Laura in the house, and I just get to sit here and watch her felt. It's like a vacation for me, so I look forward to sharing with you. You can see some of her gorgeous works of art already on the set here, and she brought even more things to share with you. She's delightful. I know you're going to love it, so, so glad you are here. Now, this is an interactive hour. If you've stumbled across this, this is our live show. Welcome. We like to have fun and hang out with our BFFs for about an hour most Wednesdays of the year. You're going to get to ask questions, especially since Laura is going to be sharing stuff. And if you join in the conversation, you get entered in a chance to win a prize. So, uh, we're going to be giving those away at the end of the show, but we always give away prizes after the live show as well. And that is when you comment down below. You can tell us your favorite takeaway, tell us maybe even what you want to learn or what ideas you were inspired to make yourself. So we have some prize winners from last week. Last week we dyed silk scarves and fabric just using a few simple tools and the microwave. So for people who left comments after the live show, we do have some prizes to give away. And our winners from last week are Caprice Nicoli. And I hope I'm seeing your last name right. Caprice Nicoli, she said, today's class was so great. I've wanted to dye my own textiles, but been afraid to try the process because she thought it was too complicated. And Alice Shoup, who said she had to watch the replay and she's inspired to try it. She's done some neps with food dye, but now she feels like maybe she can give this a go. So congratulations to Caprice and Alice. You're going to win the same prizes we gave away last week, which is some dye and some silk fabric and a few things to help you on your journey. Yay, lots of fun. We can't wait to see what you make. And everyone shares what they make in our group on Facebook, Living Felt Friends. So many of you are here. And what's so fun for me is that you get to meet Laura, who's also in our group. She's a member of our community. She's a very inspiring member of our community and she's brought some fun artwork to share. But as always, every Willy Wednesday, the fairies are just itching to get on and say hi to you and share something maybe that is relevant to last week or this week's tutorial or even stuff that they've made. And so first up is the very magical fairy, Hannah. Yay! Yay! Hey everybody, how y'all doing today? Fairy Hannah here. Hope y'all are having a beautiful week. Today I am showing y'all one of our mini studio packs. This is one of our Merino Top studio packs. All the Merino Top in this studio pack is 19.5 micron. It's a great little pack to spruce up your studio or just feel inspired with some, some fun colors. So in this studio pack you're going to get one ounce each of six different colors. We've got Sprout. True Olive, Chartreuse, which is one of my absolute favorites, Fur, Ivy, and Evergreen. So like I said, just a fun little pack to either get inspired with a, a, a color family or to spruce up your studio. Thank y'all so much. And up next, we got Miss Holly. Woo! Yay! Everyone loves those greens, Hannah. Lots of love. Hi everyone! So basically I could just go ditto what Hannah said because I am showing you the Going With The Flow Merino Top Studio Pack which has also got one ounce of six different colors. It's great for wet felting and some of these blues I will be using in my sunset that I will eventually finish um, for the ocean. But our current Going With The Flow Pack has got Glacier, Midnight, Bay, Cornflower, 
Horizon, and Evening. So beautiful colors, great for anything, but especially skies and oceans and bodies of water. And on that note, I'm going to flow on out of here and give you Miss Anne. <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Hi friends, thank you so much for being here with us and spending this time with us today. If you need to restock your studio with some pretty shiny fibers in addition to some pretty wool colors, these specialty designer big bundles are a fabulous way to go. Today I'd like to share with you the Beautiful Blues specialty designer pack. It is going to come with 10 ounces total of merino top in hydrangea, teal, Cornflower, Midnight, and Glacier. It'll come with one ounce of Merino Silk Blend in Ocean and Atlantis. This right here is some Tussa Silk in Royal Blue. Some Silk Hankies in Glacier. Wool Neps in both Evening and Lagoon. This right here, oh, oh, it's just wanting to hang with me. <laughs> this right here is Bamboo Top in Rapids. Cornflower, Sorry Silk Waist. And this is one of my all. This has become one of my all-time favorite colors right here. Is uh, this is Wisteria Angelina? Wow. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. We've got a lot of fun coming up, but we've got to we've got to get some funnies in. Next up is Fairy <laughs> Kayla. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> Woo! Hey everybody, <laughs> Fairy <laughs> Kayla here. <laughs> I was so excited about our last Fully Wednesday that I couldn't wait to start dyeing some silk. Um, so I just wanted to share those with everybody. The first one I did was the Habitai, and this is just a little piece of it, kind of Rastafarian. Uh, whoop, there we go. <laughs> I really love the way that it the dye hit it when it was sitting in that glass bowl. Kind of these spots right here are so cool. And then I gave it a shot with the, the Margolon. This one came out, it, since it's a lighter fabric, it didn't strike as much as the Habitat, but I still thought it was a lot of fun. This one's kind of mm -hmm. like cloudy sky. And then I used a little bit on this guy. Boop. Some of my silk is hiding in there, like right there. I'm not sure if oh, you can very see pretty. it. That looks like apple orchard. That's exactly what Anne said, and then mm -hmm. I compared it, and I was like, Oh yeah, this looks exactly like <laughs> Apple Orchard. <laughs> but I did have a question for everybody. Oop, put this back on. Um, what does corn say when you give it a compliment? What does corn say when you give it a compliment? Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll get out of here. I'll let Miss Marie take back over. <laughs> Just a big round of hearts for the fairies. These are the gals who answer the phone, answer your emails, pack your orders, and make absolutely everything that you get from us in one way or another. We have lots and lots of fun here, and it's just so glad that they get to have a few moments with you, and you get to have a few moments with them. And so we just thank you all so much for being here today. As I mentioned, and as we teased out earlier, our very special guest is the lovely Laura Ricks of Emerald Hill Textiles. So without further ado, let's just just bring this beauty on. Come on in, girlfriend. <laughs> Yay! Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Marie. Man, it's just been such a thrill. So I want you all to know, Laura is just a very talented artist, and she's a member of our community, agreed to come on the show, but also agreed to come in and actually do some tutorials. Um, yeah, and we were supposed to do in-person classes, but a lot of things have changed that. So she's been filming for the online school, but we're just going to have a little BFF hang here. She brought lots of fun things to show and share. So let's do it. Yeah, cool. let's do it. Okay, hey, have wait. a seat, queen. Thank Maybe you. Over. Yep. Yeah. Over all the way. Cool, cool, cool. So thank you all so much for being here, and we're, you're going to be able to ask some questions. Laura brought some show and tells, but Laura, tell us a little bit. Tell people kind of where you came from, and I know there's some people that you want to say hi to. Of course, yes. <laughs> I'm here from Lafayette, Indiana, and um, I would love to say hi to my family and miss them so much. Um, 
and you know all my art friends back at Artists Own, the art gallery that I work at, and coworkers, everybody who's tuning in, and of course all the people from the Living Felt community who, you know, I'm barely even. I'm a little nervous, but I'm barely even <laughs> <laughs> nervous to be here because I really just feel like I'm hanging out with friends. You all make the community so great, and you know everything just kind of changed for me once I finally joined. That Facebook page and got to share some of my artwork and talk to all of you people and get your tips and give you tips and I just love the interaction that I get through this community. It's, it's great. A, it's a nice community. It's yeah. a special place. Yeah. Kimberly asked what advice you would give beginners. Oh, I have a lot of advice for beginners. <laughs> Be patient with yourself. Be mm. patient with yourself. Don't expect for everything to come perfectly right away. Everybody starts somewhere. You're gonna make mistakes and that's okay. Just look at what you did, look at what you like, look at what you didn't like. Hold on to those things that you like and gradually over time those things are going to build up into your own art form, your own style, your right. own technique. You know, just just stick with it and be kind to yourself when you're starting out. You know, people mistake talent for skill i think like mm -hmm. I you agree. have talent mm -hmm. it will take time to build skill so keep that in mind be kind to yourself have patience with it mm -hmm. you can do it i agree with you yeah. it takes time to build the skill and sometimes people don't really try because they think oh that person just has it and i don't have it mm -hmm. and so then we fail to and you and i were talking a little bit about this yesterday we mm -hmm. fail to become a student again yeah. And step back and take the time and the patience to mm -hmm. learn and try and skin your knee. And yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have it. You have mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Everybody starts cool. somewhere. I actually brought one of my beginning pieces, if you want to yeah. look at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's I do that. I brought that for this very reason, actually. So Which one are we know. looking at? If you want to pull the finished one, the this most one? recent one, okay. and let's compare it to maybe one of my first ones, you can see that there's a lot that has happened from here to here. And that's not to say that this doesn't have its own merit, but I was just starting out with this one and I had to just kind of take a step back and look at what I liked and look at what I didn't like and I built over time. So I was talented here, I was talented here. I have built my skills here, so mm. just stick with it. Yeah. Stick with it. And now this one is one of the ones she's teaching. This is going to be an online class that will be in the school, and we'll share a little bit more about the school with you in just a minute. We're doing a live launch next week, so you're going to want to be here. But this class will be coming up in November. Yeah, yeah. your class will be mm -hmm. available in November. Um, not like November 1 or anything like that, but in November. And so this is um, called Breakwater Beach. Yeah. Breakwater Beach, so mm -hmm. that's what we named that one. Yeah, so I appreciate that. Steps yeah. in between. There's steps mm -hmm. in between. Yeah. And you, 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 you learn to train your eye, you learn to see different things, and then you learn to translate that from techniques, mm -hmm. which you teach a lot in this class. Yes. Really, step-by-step-by-step yeah. step by step techniques. I feel like I might be able to do this. You could do it. <laughs> no, I feel encouraged do watching it. her do this. I tried my best to break it down into steps that I felt like anybody could follow. I really wanted people to feel empowered and encouraged by these tutorials. So I really did my best to make them easy to follow. I, I hope you guys love them. I can't wait to see what you make with them. You're getting lots of wows and wowzers and amazing <laughs> and so realistic. And um, Tammy Pop says one thing that she ha has issues with is she gets discouraged. Mm -hmm. Do you have any I don't know, tips or ideas, like if people, you know, they don't, you're not going to nail it the first time, the first two, maybe two, three times you try and do something, maybe on your own, like this mm -hmm. class is so step by step that I think mm -hmm. people are going to be blown, but what, you know, what did you experience if, or what would you do if maybe you were feeling a little discouraged sometimes? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, it's hard not to feel discouraged at times when you've, you know, you've put time into a piece and you've wanted it to turn out a certain way and maybe maybe it doesn't again that's just you building your skill level so i mean know that if you're maybe disappointed in it and you can see things wrong with it then that's your talent saying i have the eye for this i have mm -hmm. the eye for this i know what it's supposed to look like but my skill level isn't there and so you just need to keep trying and just try to i always i always tell my kids like 
there's no point in making a mistake if you don't learn from it. So just try to learn something from it. Like try to take that emotion out of it that like I'm, you know, that self doubt out of it and just learn what you can from that experience mm -hmm. and, and use it moving forward. And don't be afraid to play with your mistakes or look at them critically. I actually have a piece. Yeah. Let's do that. It. Yeah. We? Okay. So I made these, I started making these wine cozies a while back and you all have had a lot of questions about them and I've tried my best to, to answer them as best I could. But on this one, I actually, I made a mistake. I had been felting with an MC1 inside and then laying out a design. And on this one, I used like more of a merino bat mm -hmm. and I used this bright orange on my inside and then I laid out this fall scene on the outside and my fibers migrated right through my sky. I folded it too much and my fibers didn't mesh well. And it turned the inside of this just a little bit orange. You can't tell on this edge, but deep in there, my sky is more of an orange. And so I was, you know, I was upset about it. I had spent about four hours making this and I stepped away from it and I thought about it and I just decided to turn it inside out. I turned it inside out, I turned this into the inside, I created another piece to wrap around the outside, I added some buttons. I actually really like this style now, and I think I might try to make some more this way. So once you can take your emotions out of it, maybe you can think of a way to use that and turn let's, it into something else. You let's, know? let's show them, maybe we can, it's hard to see inside there, but let's let's show them this maybe a little bit they can see this fun little scene and so the inside was a little more like this yes. before yep and then mm -hmm. this burnt orange just migrated straight up through my sky and turned my sky <laughs> like this orange color especially on the inside there but you can't really tell on the rim here and I like the I like the color contrast you know so this is something that I turned into something that I think is still usable I still like um, I yeah, like just, that your your tag is specific and shows the project, the product on yes. the tag. Mm -hmm. Very cute. Yep. Very sweet. I love that. Yeah. Innovate. So, yeah. Think about it. And I have projects that I've just ended up cutting into scraps and making something else out of them. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But, yeah. uh, you know, yeah, I have a Christmas tree that I made out of just cut up failed projects. And... Just do what you can to learn from it. Mm. Use it if you can. You know. Victoria Ryan says, a happy accident. Uh, Iva Dean says, happy mistakes. And um, love love a wonderful save, says Dory. Uh, Maria Cooper asks, what was your biggest aha skill? <sighs> Maybe like a breakthrough thing. For One you. of my biggest ones was blending my skies and blending techniques and that's something that I focus on in both of my classes. I think it was a time saver. I think it was a good way to add depth to my pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so I think blend the, the blending techniques that I use and I share in the class, those really helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. I really like those too. And mm -hmm. so we'll show you this piece right behind us. Let me grab that. We'll start forward and then I'll lay it down so you can see. So this piece is another piece uh, that is in Laura's teaching in the school. And this is one of the ones where you show them, you show them exactly how to get this incredibly vivid sky. Yes. I mean, I know the first time I ever saw one of your pieces in the group, I was just like, wow, just blown <laughs> away, wow. This is really, really cool. Yeah. Yep. I, yep. I try to break it down as easy as I can for you guys. I want you to feel like you know how to do this after you take these classes. Mm-hmm. Everyone says they love that. The clouds are amazing, so amazing and inspirational. Everyone's really excited, excited, excited for these <laughs> classes. I I'm know. I'm excited too. Me I'm too. excited too, yes. <laughs> so cool. Now, what's this one called, Laura? Um, we, we said what crisp autumn day. That's our crisp, crisp autumn day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> crisp autumn day. So let's see what else people want to know. Wow to the skies and clouds. Um, 
how do you combine wet felting and needle felting together? You know, that's what she's going to share in the, mm -hmm. in the class is exactly how she does it. Because, you know, I get to sit here and watch you felt just like I get to see so many artists felt who come through. And I really feel like you have developed techniques that I've not seen somebody else share. It's not that um, it's going to be this, I guess it's not like, some big secret thing. I mean, like right. it's not like something we couldn't have imagined, right. but you've developed a process and a method of approaching it that really has streamlined the way you work, brought a method to the way you work, mm -hmm. and makes a lot of sense. Like you understand why you're doing what you're doing and mm -hmm. have created it. So I just want to encourage you guys to consider taking her class because I'm watching her teach things in a way or a method that you can tell she's figured out on her own, which is just really fun. Thank you. Yeah. So, Thank you. Yeah, something I haven't seen somebody else teach specifically. It's not rehashed. It's new. Yeah. And I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot preparing for this class and thinking about how to teach it. You you learn even more. So, you right. know, I've wanted to make, you know, how do I break down these steps in a reproducible way that I can explain to people and mm -hmm. feel like they can do this. So, I so I've done my best. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's awesome. Uh, how do we sign up for the class? We will tell you about that. Oh, okay, so Norma asked, do you work from a picture or from your imagination? I usually work from a picture. So I like to take my own pictures, if at all possible. Um, sometimes for, you know, like sometimes if it's a winter scene or maybe like a field or something like that, I might look online at pictures of different fields and try to compile them into sure. my own version of a field. But it's easiest for me if I have one of my own photos to work from. And that's what I like. So I'm always, you know, popping out my camera, taking mm -hmm. pictures of things that inspire me. Um, even if it's just clouds in the sky, if you're inspired by something, I would say take a snapshot of it mm -hmm. and come back to it later. Maybe give it a little heart on your phone so you can find it later. Because <laughs> <laughs> I always lose my inspiration photos and I have to sift through everything. But yeah, but yeah just... Just take those inspiration photos and mm -hmm. someday, even if right now you don't know how to make that scene, someday you might be able to. So, mm -hmm. so True. save those. Yeah. And you can put two scenes together. I know we had someone here doing Anna Repke's workshop and she couldn't decide. She was doing a desert scene. She couldn't decide. And so I had her cut out the land and superimpose it over another mm -hmm. sky. You yeah. can bring those two things together if you want. Absolutely. And even cut, physically cut out the photograph yes. so that you mm -hmm. have it right in front of you and you can see. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the light source may be different, but yeah, yeah. You can fix that. You can fix that in you your can. picture. <laughs> you can. Okay. Um, Laura, were you an artist, like a painter? No, not, not really. I drew a lot as a kid. I loved drawing, so I spent... And, you know, that goes into, like, talent and skill, too. People say, oh, she's so artistic. Well, I just spent all those hours practicing when I was five or six or seven or eight, you know, like, but that doesn't mean that you as an adult can't start drawing and developing these, these skills. I just put a lot of time in when I was young, but I kind of put art to the side as I, as I went into adulthood. I went to college for biology. I worked in a lab. I still work one day a week in the lab, so I had this very scientific career, but I was just very unhappy not having this creative outlet and it all kind of fell in line with me finding felting and I just decided I wanted to create art. I finally got to a place where I could go part-time in the lab mm -hmm, that I mm -hmm. worked um, and that gave me the time to felt. I decided to join an art fair like to Exhibit? basically submit pieces oh. for consideration to be in this art fair and I only had enough pieces to apply with and so <laughs> I got, like I mean it was like my first goal it was like you need to send eight photos of your artwork and I was like okay I need to create eight pieces of artwork <laughs> to, to take <laughs> pictures of <laughs> so that I can apply to this show and it was a local show it's called Art on the Wabash and I love it um and I got accepted to the show, so then it was like, okay, I have May to September to fill a booth now with these like felted art pieces. And that's what I How did. Fun. That's what I worked on. I was able to do it. And I actually ended up 
winning the People's Choice Award for that art fair. And oh, I think a, a lot feeling. of it had to do with the felting process, too. It was something that in my area just isn't very popular. People didn't really, they'd never seen this before, a lot mm -hmm. of them. Mm -hmm. And they were so, I don't know, just enchanted by this whole process and how does that work because it's really magic the way that, the way that felting works mm -hmm. so you know that was just an amazing experience and a chance to connect with my community that art fair was so special because I feel like I got to spend the whole day talking to members of my community about something that I love doing so yeah that was just special yeah super fun and mm -hmm. so when was it when did you start felting that art fair that um, I participated in was 2017. That was September 2017 that I did that art fair. And I had probably just started felting really like in earnest, maybe like a year before. So, you know, a lot of my pieces weren't, you know, necessarily at the skill level that they are now, sure. but like people still, you know, if you, if you always feel like it's not good enough yet, it's not good enough yet. Like, I, I don't want to put myself out there because I feel like it's not good enough yet. You know, don't right. feel that way. You just kind of have to give yourself a goal and go for it. Yeah. That's Fun. what I did. That's so awesome. We're yeah. glad you did. Yeah. I'm glad I did too. <laughs> Maybe yeah. let's share one of your other pieces that you would like. You pick one that you want to share. I love my bugs back here. Let's look at maybe my little bugs real quick. I know we focus a lot on landscapes here, but sometimes I just really like to Let's hold them up create. For one I've got my butterfly and my little caterpillar over here. And these were just, sometimes I like to just really get into the nitty gritty and get into those details on pieces. And these are things that I do when I can find time for them because they're small pieces but they're pretty time consuming to get that level of detail but I just I just do my best to bring them to life they are beautiful absolutely people are like whoa amazing wow they look like photos I love the bugs they look like photos what is this a yarn or this fabric like a, you guys have you seen that scrubby yarn that you get I think you make like little actual like scr scrub washcloths out of them oh. <laughs> but I just I looked at it always be looking at whatever fibers you have on hand and see what it reminds you of I looked at it and it reminded me of this golden rod it had like that texture and I was actually able to needle felt it in mm -hmm. and it would poke through the back and actually stick and I trapped some of it under a little bit of MC1 just to make sure that it stayed but I really like playing with textures and fibers like this wow the people yeah. are loving these so much so someone asked do you have an idea how many hours you spent on the mar monarch how long did that take you it took me a long time. <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, it took me a solid, I would say, week of working. Um, I, I don't, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was 40 hours. I don't know if I worked on it quite eight hours a day, but I worked on it pretty steadily for about a week, I would say, to get this done. But I love, I mean, I just loved the way that it turned out. Now, are these, are there, what the question came up, are the, are the bugs wet felted? In a way, I do a lot of work needle felting, and then I do take it through a wet felting process because I kind of like to flatten everything out, and it, I feel like it puts it all on one plane and gives it a smooth finish. So I had a lot of it tacked down before I wet felted, and then I go back and add details again if, if I lose like I lost some of the brightness in this yellow on my caterpillar so I just went back and popped some of that back in after wet felting as needed um, Jennifer says so realistic I think a week is such a short amount of time and Anne Finer I think it was says your biology background is really showing <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, love, I love nature I do <laughs> wow, these are brilliant they really are so cool I've got this uh, this one over here now you brought some other things to show what do you want to show next she brought so many show and tells they were really I just did. delightful what do, do you, you want to show? Do you want to talk about project ideas or do you want to talk about artwork? 
are we looking at? Aren't they all artwork? They are all artwork. (laughs) They're all artwork. Um, Um, Well, let's look at... Uh, let's look at this at this piece here, and then we'll go to some of the smaller collective co- fun yeah. fun things. She smaller brought some real yeah. fun things for like maybe a little less committal. But let's start by looking at this sure. uh, one more landscape that she brought in. This was recent, y'all in the group. Um, she shared. So let me pause for a second, and I'll pop up the group again. Um, oh, it's in the wrong. It's not in the right place. Sorry about that. I'll have to bring that up. Um, we'll put it in the description, our Facebook group. So here is a recent piece. And mm-hmm. tell us a little bit about this one, Laura. I think on this one, I was just, you know, thinking about winter coming on. And I wanted to do something. I work a lot with vivid colors. So I wanted to do something with more of like a neutral or muted palette. And it, it got me thinking of winter. I wanted to use the same blending techniques that I use in a lot of my skies, but maybe with just a different pattern or color palette than I'm used to. I really liked the soft pink from Living Felt. I tried to work in some silks. I tried to go more minimal on my clouds because I usually tend to make those such a focal point. So I think I was just trying to do something a little bit different with a little bit more of a different mood, a little more subdued, and it was a lot of fun to make. it took some finessing. I ended up adding in these geese weren't necessarily part of the plan, but I, I really thought they added a fun element and movement to the sky. So don't be afraid to let your piece turn into something that maybe you hadn't originally intended. Mm, you know, let, it, right. let it be what it wants to be. So <laughs> Diane Corbett says, brr. <laughs> <laughs> And Janine Frank says that winter landscape is incredible. And Susie Perry says she didn't realize how big that piece was, which is true. So like when we share something in the group, sometimes they don't have scale mm-hmm. to, to know how big something is. But it's fa- it's definitely a statement piece. I mean, that's a big enough piece to frame. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, someone asked a bit about how, you, how you're mounting your stuff. So maybe just a, just a minute on like these these are like the bugs were kind of a quick mount yeah these two and maybe how you like to frame your pieces a lot of the pieces that i brought for show and tell i quickly placed into mats and i used i think marie has a Mm -hmm. a whole mounting video i used like velcro to mount these to the mat just for for quick showing but a lot of the pieces if i'm actually going to put it in a frame sometimes I'll sew it onto an acid-free board. So I will actually poke little holes along a line of that acid-free mounting mat and just gently sew some of those sections so that I know that that piece won't fall on mm. on that mat. Um, and I'll use like some double-sided acid-free tape maybe to mm-hmm. help help and support so it. But so here's some you can see and those those build up a little space for the, mm-hmm. to take Guess, up a little bit yeah. of the Felt is the space. thick, felt mm-hmm. is thick, so mm-hmm. if you don't create a little bit of space in there, it's gonna, you know, squish down on the edges. So. And now, when you frame your pieces, like for an exhibit or something, are you framing them? Or are you having them framed somewhere? Because I, I framed a number of pieces, like I know it can, it's not inexpensive. It's not inexpensive, and I like to, especially if I'm taking it to a fair, I like to put my piece behind glass Mm -hmm. because I don't want them to get dirty or exposed to the elements. You never know what the weather is going to be like. So I use spacers and I I always use museum glass, which is a little bit more glare, more of an expense, but it's it's non-glare and people can really still see those fibers. So that's something that I like to do with my pieces. Um, And I do so I do frame them. Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And it also, when you put them behind museum glass, it also usually has like a UV filter Protection. that yeah mm-hmm. keeps them. I know my husband always puts UV, I mean, mm-hmm. museum glass on our pieces too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, cool. Everyone's loving them very much. Gorgeous inspiration, says Lori Girl. And we just answered Mary Ellen. We answered the question about the glass. So you don't want the wool touching the glass. Right. You do you do want space between there. And a professional framer will know that. Mm-hmm. And if you have a mat board, that's usually your protection. So if you have, um, re- I, I call them relief. So elements sticking up, smashing against the glass. Well, 
it's not ideal, but I've actually never had anything sweat behind the glass. Have you? And we live in a humid place. I've never had any condensation or moisture behind the glass. Maybe it, maybe at one show I had one piece that maybe sweat a little bit. Oh. And that's just being out like on a 90 degree humid day. Outside. Like outside. And mm -hmm. I think that piece, the sun was striking the glass. So, you know, in those, in those conditions. And I feel like I just, I just moved it out of the sun and it disappeared. So that's about the only time. And that was a pretty extreme case of elements that you wouldn't be normally exposing your right. artwork to. But... Not, yeah. to, not to derail you, but we have a special communique from the field that your cat Spencer can see you on the screen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Spencer. <laughs> I got to see a picture of her dog earlier, too, yeah. which is just adorable. In fact, I want to pop up just real quick while we're here. So um, after the show, well, and I'll do it after the show. We'll do it after the show. Now, people can get your work at a gallery in your area. So yes. I'm just going to pop up for them to see what did I choose. Uh, that's a small. Let me see what happens if I do a big one. There's a big one. So yeah. tell us just real quick about the gallery here, at Laura. That's Artisan, and it's in Lafayette, Indiana. It's a really beautiful downtown art gallery that I've been lucky enough to join this year. I'm so glad that I chose to join this artist cooperative this year. It's given me a place to display and show my work since all my shows got canceled. Um, and they've been just a really lovely group of people to work with. They've been in business for 20 years. And it's all kinds of different artwork. I don't want to start naming them all because I'm going to forget some of these But, I mean, you, you can find whatever kind of art you want. And it's really exciting. Just last week, they started selling online. They've never done that before. So they have a new online shop at artists-own.com. You can go on and shop all the artists who are all really lovely and talented. And I have a few pieces there's smaller pieces that are on there right now. I have been saving some of my larger pieces because I need she things come to, here. to bring with me. <laughs> so some of these items will make their way onto the website, I'm sure. But I do have some of those wine cozies available that everybody oh, loved fun. so much. Um, and I have a couple gift sets of the wine cozies. Mm -hmm. so. And some little hoop art. A little hoop art, yeah. And then gift ideas, things that would be like small gift ideas. And I will point out that this year it's probably more important than ever to shop small and, yeah. and keep those small businesses in mind as you do your Christmas shopping so I agree I agree we yeah. always like to buy from artists anyway yeah now if people are in Indiana where is the shop exactly it's on Main Street in downtown Lafayette it's um, really easy to find it's it's an establishment it's been yeah. there for a while it's, it's a really beautiful, beautiful, beautiful yes. storefront mm -hmm. beautiful art we were looking through some of the art earlier so it's artist hyphen own that's where you can see her work if you're in Indiana or you can shop it online mm -hmm. yeah, yeah cool okay people yeah. are having lots of fun yeah. so hello artist own people <laughs> <laughs> nice gallery okay so the question keeps popping up what do you felt on what's your I, substrate my base my mm -hmm. base mm -hmm. i use the pre-felt i love the 19.5 micron pre-felt from living felt is usually almost always my base yeah and so, in fact, why don't we segue to this big, beautiful piece that you brought yeah. here. So yeah. This is a really fun one. And we'll hold it. I'll hold it up here for you okay. first so this, you can see this amazing piece she made. And I've been having fun with these little galaxy scenes lately. <laughs> They're just so fun once you get started on this. And if you're new to wet felting or you haven't tried wet felting yet or you've been wanting to try wet felting, I would encourage you. This was inspired by Marie's Artful Felt Fabric. Artful too. Felt Fabric. I'm going to pop that up for y'all. Yeah. For those who don't know, yeah. here's, this is probably too large, but here we go. I'll pop it up. You'll look for that wet felting. In it. Can I make it smaller? Oh, let's get rid of that one. Wet felting, uh, artful felt fabric. It's on our YouTube channel from this year. Mm -hmm. And that was just a fun mm -hmm. jumping off point. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And, and I just got inspired by a little section of the artful felt fabric that I made that looked like a galaxy. And I took it a little further. So this is on pre-felt. I used um, two layers of the Midnight Merino. And then I just had a lot of fun with those bling fibers that you're always talking about, the sari silk waist and the silk hankies. Um, and Marie shows you some of the things that you can do with that artful fabric. 
And she even shows you how to make a little French knot. And I, so I just did like a bunch of little <laughs> French knots all over this. So these are fun to make. You know what I love about these French knots is they're not white. They're like sea green or sea mm -hmm. foam yep. green. I wouldn't have thought of that. Yep, and when I tried the white, when I first started, I was doing white and it just seemed like it was standing out almost too much. And then I found this um, embroidery floss that was variegated. It had like this color change in it. Oh, and so that's I why could, they are a little different. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And to me that looks more like space because not all the stars are the same color or... Now this looks like bamboo. That looks like I maybe this Neptune. Is a, I think this, well, this I think is evergreen silk hanky oh, right here. Oh, hanky? Yeah. Oh, it and could, I it could used, almost pass. Yeah. yeah, I used some masquerade bamboo, I think, from the masquerade pack. This blue that yeah, it, I can see the transition into blue to the purple. purple. And, you know, that's something that I was like, I wish I'd used more of that transition because that was really nice. So And so, sorry, silk waves mm -hmm. in here. Mm -hmm. I think I even this have some like MC1s. Really? Yeah, like some of the stuff that looks more like cloudy is some <laughs> MC1. So, so play around with it. <laughs> and you can make these in really small in really small forms if you don't want to start with something this big. Oh right. Or think about cutting up a big piece of fabric into small ones of these. So it's fun to play with. Now Susie Perry says she would put a little spaceship off to the <laughs> side. <laughs> Do it, yeah. Marianne Gross says that's a lot of French knots. It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but those French knots are something that's kind of nice to do while you're just sitting watching TV with your family at night. You can have that on your lap and just... Okay, so now you're already getting the request for the Galaxy class. So oh. <laughs> maybe, she'll, maybe she'll teach me and I can show you. And I want to show you all in the back. So she, you have used a stabilizer mm -hmm. on the back for yep. the knots. And then you can see... I'll just hold it right up there. You can see all the, the little threads back there. So she did put a stabilizer, and you could just get like an iron-on, mm -hmm. pell-on, fusible web, whatever, mm -hmm. um, iron-on to the back. But I love this piece. So beautiful and colorful. Fun to make. Fun mm -hmm. to make. If you're dying to get your hands wet and start felting something. Yeah. Now, you made some other things from that class yes, as well. lots that of things. Other ideas. And that class, so the Arful felt fabric, was designed to become anything else, whether it's a journal cover. And in fact, Laura did some of the things that I plan to do and never did never do which is simple shapes stitch on top mm -hmm. designs yeah so can we look at some of those yeah okay I, I these ones some, right here yep I made okay. some cards let's I'll hold them up so. and you know this artful fabric kind of came in right when I was joining that art gallery and I know that um, when I first joined I noticed a lot of the artists had cards that they were selling but I didn't have any cards that I was selling and I had just watched this video and I thought well you know I can use this to create some fun little cards to sell at the shop and I made these they're actually magnets these these little things so they're a card that you can give to somebody and then they're and they're pinned on they're pinned on and then they can take them home and they have a little a little gift I love this touristy one so the state you're in and yes. the city you're in marked on the state is so clever yeah because pins and magnets are one of the things that people often get when they're mm -hmm. going back home yeah 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 and home hometown pride so <laughs> go Lafayette and I showed <laughs> you <laughs> I brought some little steps for this too oh you did yeah oh let's I look did. let's look okay did, we're gonna so. go overhead um could you bring us in just a little Anne's gonna bring us in a few clicks oh I'll bring these over here and we'll come over yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's the fabric that I actually cut. Okay. Cut this Indiana out from. Here, this one. Yep. Let's do this. Yep. Oh, I have to get. So I made here. myself a I made myself a yellow one and and a black one and you know Lafayette or the home of the Boilermakers, Purdue Boilermakers. So I used their colors. Go Boilermakers. Yeah, boiler up. <laughs> 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 and so. So I had to use the hometown colors, and I just created a, it's a pretty thin, yeah. thin piece of felt. I think on this, I might not have, I don't know if I actually, no, I think I did still use the pre-felt. Um, lots of hankies and swirls over the top, and then once I have that done, I cut it down to size, and I, I like to place my magnet at this point 
before I yeah. cut and sew. Yeah. So I use these Aileen's magnets because they're nice and thin. They're oh, nice and uh -huh. thin for mm -hmm. especially this card. I didn't want too much thickness. That's good thinking. So I go ahead and I place the template of my state, chose where to put my magnet, ironed on my backing, and then used that template to sew around and stitch. And then I just used like a little tiny, I had a little tiny cookie cutter heart that I just, or not heart, star. star. Mm -hmm. Star. People Cute. call Lafayette the Star City sometime. I don't know where that comes from, Star City. I need to do my <laughs> history lessons. But, star City So I did Lafayette. a star, yeah. Now, do you like to stitch and then cut or cut and then stitch? I think I stitched and then cut. Yeah, I, I find it easier to stitch and then cut because then you have, if you try and cut and then stitch, it's so hard to get right in that little mm -hmm. spot. But yeah. so get your outline on there, stitch first, and then cut, mm -hmm. and then you can cut it down. Yep. Yeah, however you want. Yep, and I that's, love that. I made, I made like my little bird and my little dinosaur the same, the same kind of way. Ew, that's a freebie for you right there. Everyone's yeah. going to go home and dig into their, their scrap, which I still have a box of scraps, so hopefully you save your scrap. Now, you brought scrap projects too. I did. I brought scrap projects. Yeah, these are, oh, we're not looking at us. My goodness. We have nobody, we're, yeah. <laughs> I got no one watching the, the sorry. Y'all were looking at an empty table, but that's just for a second. <laughs> we're back. So, I, yeah, I brought scrap projects. This one first? Which, who first? Sure, we can okay, do that one first. Okay, okay. This, this one, one, I love this one because it's on my this is on my list for this year, but not out of scraps. I didn't think of that. Well, and this is actually my like kind of tree of mistakes too. Like uh, these are these were like failed projects or projects that I just really wasn't happy with the way that they turned out, and I just I hate to throw anything away, but I felt like I could make something out of this. So. And I love it now. I love it. So don't be discouraged by your mistakes. Just save them. You can turn them into something else. I love that. Yep. I, I never, that, this never would have occurred to me to use all your colorful scraps. Mm -hmm. And they all actually really go together. I mean, it's really thought out. You have this like light green, light green, light green that that theme mm -hmm. carries. And then yeah, the dark blue, find... dark blue, dark blue. I'll do a quick, y'all can look at it real quick here overhead. Like find some beautiful. similar colors to to kind of I twist them around almost in threes and I usually have three three sizes so I don't I'm not uh -huh. sure if this is five inches but I, right. I would probably have like five three five inch squares and then I would probably go down a quarter of an inch and do three more squares and nice. a quarter of an inch and do three more squares and that way I taper up you can and it's it. yep and it's all on a wire I just did a, a metal wire like I poked each one through onto each other and the wire pops out the top I love it and they're just mm -hmm. they're just partially felted anyway they're not rock hard felted nope. they still have loft mm -hmm. they're it's so cute and you could have this tree out any time of year yeah have all the colors mm -hmm. so sweet I love it good scrap project here okay what else did you bring um Who I next? brought let's look at my little snowman okay tell us this little snowman I know that on on Living Felt, we talk a lot about, you know, you ask your questions and the answer always is make a sample, make a, make a sample. And so I know that sometimes you want to save those, those samples for reference later, but if you have a sample and you've gotten your answer or you have your section of your sample that you want to keep, you can use some of the rest of the sample for fun little projects like this. And, you know, I love to needle felt these little snowmen for Christmas ornaments. And I just made his little scarf and hat out of out of my sample. I love him so much. And it's got all these random threads in there, mm -hmm. whatever, just mixy bits. Yeah, I was it makes just, you just want to make stuff mm -hmm. like this just for that. Yep, and I have done that this year. <laughs> I've started to do that now. Now that I'm running out of scraps and samples, I'm finding myself making things like this just. Just to, to have use. them. Yes. Yeah. You could, you know, you could make little bits like this on the side of something else that you're felting. So you're mm -hmm. felting a bigger project and you could just make like a pot holder size even on the side yeah, and a have lot your of, mixy bits. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times when I'm felting a large piece like this, I'll make like just a couple squares of fabric that I want to use for the artful fabric or my magnets or I'll just felt those really quickly at the end of felting a larger project. So clever and this one is this is a Nuno it's got fabric on the back and you've got some yarns or fabric or something mm -hmm. inside it's just a it is a little 
Yep. And Eclectic that's, piece. That's a sample that I made watching Marie's cow neck, cow neck oh. tutorial. Yep. Oh. Yep. It's a little probably thicker Thick. than yeah. I would want <laughs> cow, neck it's to, cozy. cow neck to be. But, but we don't live in Indiana. So. We live in Texas. So, you know? so yeah. So that was my sample, and my sample was too thick. I love it. I love it. I love it. What else? You have another sample ones. What do you um, want to show? I, but maybe Tell those, what you want. those Christmas tags, maybe? You okay, want to talk sure. about some of those? Sure. Someone says that was a great idea to add to the owl ornament, and somebody else totally wants a scarf in those colors, and great ideas for scraps, love the tree, love ways to recycle, time, Linda Reader says time for more mistakes. But yes, <laughs> yes, I, I hope you all feel that way. You, you've got to take that negative emotion out of your mistakes and have some fun with them. Yep. Jennifer says, Jennifer McMullen says she also uses, makes doll clothes from scraps and samples. So yeah. great, great idea. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Tell us what you brought. Okay. I brought some Christmas tags. These are another fun thing to do. If you have little scraps of felt, you, I use a cutting machine for these. I used, you know, a big tag and then I cut a smaller tag with, with my design in it and just placed my little scrap of felt behind and then on the back you know they say two from and this is just fun you know you don't need a very big scrap to make something like this and you also don't need a fancy cutting machine so I brought one that I did not use a fancy cutting machine Yay. for I cut this tag by hand I made this sheet of oh, fabric that's I was pretty. trying to figure out something for poinsettias um, and I cut a little bit of my fabric and I trapped some little nips in the center. And then I just found a craft paper oh, that so had smart. poinsettias on it and cut the shape out and just use that. You are so to clever. Make my little tag. So don't feel like you have to have a fancy cutting machine, you don't have to have one. Um, you, so can do, you can do it without. So sweet. And have fun. And these, you know, if people know you and they know that you love felting and you, they they know that this is this is your craft, your hobby, your art, then them getting a little tag like this from you is going to personalize that gift that much more. So You know what? I think these tags would make really cute ornaments after they're tags. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can just hang them. That, that would be yeah. such a sweet little ornament. Like my tree is a lot of handmade stuff and a lot of really just mm -hmm. sweet, sweet stuff. This would make a really cute ornament. You might even put a silver string on it instead or something that feels like whatever. Do adorable. Yep. I love it. Yep. And you can and you can needle felt too. So like I needle felt it a little. I'll hold this one up and then we'll do it a little quick. It's so cute because it's this is like a little, it's like a little flower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just use double-sided fabric tape, I think, to stick it to stick it on there. And then I want to show one more option yeah. because super special. My daughter Claire came up with this one. This is her project. I've got to give her credit for it. She found these little silicone forms. I don't know if they're for like melted chocolate or like. You could do jelly, no jelly you know, in them. Do yeah. all the Bake Off watchers and she very common leaves for jelly or chocolate. Yeah, she mm -hmm. saw these at the craft store and she said, you know, Mom, do you think we could wet felt into these forms to create this shape? And I was like, I don't really know. I've never tried anything like that. And she's like, Well, can we buy it? I want to try it. And so she tried it and she made this little gift tag. It is so, so wonderful. Look at yeah. it. And what a great ornament it would make, too, even mm -hmm. all by itself. Now, you have some Angelina in there, yep, right? Yep, threw some of that in. And I think she might have thrown some silks in up here to make, it, it like, It even looks the, like silk in the white. And yeah, the red, I mean. Yeah, and I have a scrap bag of, of fibers from other projects that I think she pulled most of this stuff from. So. And now, what's, who, what's your daughter's name who made this? Claire. Claire great job, that. Claire. Yeah. We, we love it so much. We just... The moment we saw it, fell in love. It's, <laughs> it's so sweet. Yeah, it's fun to watch the kids. The kids felt, and Lizzie has also done some projects for her 4-H fair. They do a great job, and they've gotten to the point where they don't need my help that much right. when they do their <laughs> projects, which is really, it's kind of nice though to see them doing their own thing. So yeah, they do for a great sure, job for sure. And it, you know, it's a great example of something. I know 
We used to have a, one of our staff had a six-year-old who would sit in needle felt by himself, but some people are concerned about their kids felt needle felting, and this is a great multi-dimensional shape made with the wet felting, mm -hmm. just like that. So wet felting in a mold, and we've also wet felted into cookie cutters, mm -hmm. same, similar. So definitely a project yeah. for kids. Lots of fun. Fun, fun, fun. Okay, people are having lots of fun. Let me see what's everyone saying. Okay, that's great. Claire is a very talented young lady. Claire is a whiz. Good job. Cute ornament. Gorgeous work, Claire. You're inspiring these gals. Someone says, oh, that they have molds that they want to put to use and everyone's loving them. Very creative. Okay, cool. What else? I know she brought so many things to share. I think, yeah, I think I've got mm -hmm. a couple more things. So we have these. a few more minutes. These are just little miniature embroidery hoops that I found online and they look like this when you buy them. It's a little pack. And you can just use any little, sometimes I trim the edges of my pieces to get, get a straight edge when I'm done. So use your scrap felt or even if it's a sample or an artful felt piece. You can needle felt a little picture on there and just slide it into one of these little embroidery hoops, these it's, tiny little minis. It seems like they would go pretty fast, too. Yeah. I mean, they, oh, they go so quick. pretty, it'd be like a fun little evening. Now, this would be a cute way to do ornaments or add a little special greeting card, make mm -hmm. a greeting card or to a gift, add a little gift. Yeah. Great magnet even, right? Yep, a say? magnet. Yeah. I feel like you could turn it into like even a little brooch or a little... Um, Pendant, whatever you want to do with it. Jeanette says, you have so many clever ideas. <laughs> it's going fast now. You have so many clever ideas, and I can do the tags with the grandkids. Yeah. Love it. Wow, never seen the mini hoops. Where did you find them? I found them online. I think they were like a pandemic purchase, you know, like was when you like get Amazon like, or like, <laughs> like on Amazon, yeah. When you can't go out to the stores and look for things and you're just shopping online. Spontaneous, so, yeah. Yep, my, Amazon. My, my husband says, you had these in your cart for four days. I'm like, hey, well, they're just shopping, right? Yeah. Window shopping right now. <laughs> okay, so probably one of those things that I bought and they probably took about five weeks to come and by the time they got there, I had forgotten about them, but then I was really excited. So uh. yeah, I got, I got them on, on Amazon. I'm oh, sure. fun, 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 fun. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just so glad that you're here, Laura. And as I mentioned, y'all, she's here filming not one, but two classes for the online school. Some of you know um, the classes are, we're, we're launching the school next week. Laura's classes will be ready later in November. But let me just pull that up for you real quick. Uh, if you're not already, if you're not already on our email list, meaning you've purchased something from us, even if it's a free download, or you haven't registered yet, you're gonna wanna go to the site. Now this is the countdown from earlier today. Uh, oh, let me pull up a big one for you. It's feltingtutorials.com. So you're gonna wanna go there and um, this says we're down to seven days. It's less than this now, uh, less, than, less than this amount of time. Go to feltingtutorials.com. If you're not on our newsletter, you can join right there. We're gonna launch the school live next week, right here on the show. My friend Joyce Hazelrig is gonna be here. She's the one who needle felts the dragons. The fairies will be here. We're gonna give away prizes. It's gonna be a super, super fun day. And as I mentioned, Laura has two classes that are gonna be in there, and they are the um, Crisp Autumn Day and Breakwater Beach, which is behind me, and they're two independent classes. And I really think that if you're a beginner or a beginner to intermediate, that you're gonna find them very approachable. You don't have to be advanced, but I promise that advanced people, I've been felting going on 20 years or so now, I, I can't wait to make the projects that she shared and to use her same techniques. I love learning techniques from a new artist, so I'm super excited about your classes. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to oh. be here, to talk to me today, and to film these, it's these a thrill. awesome classes. It's yeah. a thrill. And I'm like, I'm a little starry-eyed right now having oh. Laura here. <laughs> it's so fun. <laughs> so I want you guys to do that, but you also got to follow her, okay? So jump on over. She's on Instagram. 
um, check it out. It's Emerald Hill Textiles. So go to Instagram, search her, follow her page. We'll link to it also in the descriptions, but it's Emerald Hill Textiles. You'll find her on Instagram. You'll be able to see her Facebook there and find the gallery and all the things that, that we've been sharing with you. So everyone is super excited. They're excited to take your classes online. Pamela Miller says she is on the list. Kimberly Pulley says, thank you, Laura. Aww. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. We love Kimberly. you too. Yes. Um, everyone is happy. Uh, oh, let's see now. We have a proclamation here. Patty Bogdan says, best Wooly Wednesday ever. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> People are sharing your name. They say it's so, they're so inspiring and they're so excited. And I am too. I know you're going to love our classes. Lots of great classes to take. Next week, we're going to take you through the school. We're going to show you the classes that will be there on launch day. We're going to show you some of the features as well and just explain kind of how the school works. And we're going to take you through all of that next Wednesday right here two o'clock central so check it out I promise it's gonna be more fun than whatever's on TV at that time but we have some prizes to give away you want to give away prizes yeah with us? yeah okay. I'd love to and has her magic basket um, so we'll go over here now we'll standy uppy for a while <laughs> All right, I'll swing over here. Okay, y'all, so we like to give away prizes at this time. As I mentioned, um, everyone who participates in the live show, um, you've asked questions, come on in. We'll get just a little fuzzy. <laughs> um, well, your name has been going into Anne's magic hat, and so we're going to give away two prizes. Now, uh, do you want to tell them what the prizes are, Anne? Absolutely. So we've got a really fun assortment here. Of course, you can pick your own colors for each one of these options, but we have got a piece of the... 100% merino pre-felt, two colors of merino top, and then three embellishment fibers. We've got Silk Hankies, Angelina, and Sorry Silk, but of course we have a bunch of fun options, other options as well. But there's something more that they oh, win. Okay. So these are only for the live winners right now. And you're going to win an original little work of art, a galaxy made by Laura. <laughs> so there's <laughs> there's two of these to give away, and that's all y'all. So we're going to draw <laughs> some names right now. And the, the colors that uh, we picked out here are reminiscent of the galaxy. We're going to let Laura pick. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to get one too, Anne? Okay, we'll pick two names. So listen up, and let me just say this now: if you're, if you're, um, if you didn't win something today, make a plan after live chat. Close the chat. Comment down below because we're going to draw two more winners next week of the fibers. We won't have any more hoops to give away. But for today, we have two winners. Who are they, gals? I have Catherine Ford. Yay! <laughs> I have Susan Cunningham. Woohoo! Congratulations, congratulations, gals. Thank you so much. And congratulations, gals, for the winner. If you, um, I know you're already in our database, but you can just contact us if you want to change your colors. Go to our website, scroll down to the Contact Us page, use the little form, tell us what you want to win. And just thanks so much, Laura. Thank you for being Thank here you on the for show. Thanks Thank for having me. Thanks for all this inspiration. Me. We're all going to be busy for like until your class launches. We're going to be busy with working on I your ideas. So, I hope so. <laughs> That's all, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week. Thank Be good you. to yourselves. Bye. Bye.